Okay, so here we are in the senior design lab. I'm going to try to talk quieter than I have previously to avoid blowing out the camera. And so tell us who you are and what you've built. My name is Ron, and I built a flanger. Um, the original design was done by a guy by the name of John Hollis. Mm -hmm. But this was an adaptation done by R.G. King. And so to explain what's going on in this circuit, it would probably be best if I go ahead and use a schematic and also point to the... Um, point to the uh, board? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just looking for a more elegant board. It's been a long week. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so what we have here is uh, right here, our input is coming in and we have a huge resistor, a 10 mega ohm resistor. Actually, uh, we don't need that level of detail. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. Just show okay. us the, 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 the BBD chip and the clock. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Just show us where the, those sure. are at. Sure, so here's the um, bucket brigade delay, mm -hmm. and that's what provides the, that's um, right here. Mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. provides the delay signal. But um, the downside of it is we have a lot of high-frequency noise that comes around, so we have a low-pass filter to filter out some of that noise. And then our output is right here, so that yeah. corresponds right here. But it is a discrete time system, so it's also going to need, it, it's sampled, it's not sampled in amplitude, but it's sampled in time. So right. DSP kind of comes in, mm -hmm. you know, that, that idea of, uh, well, I should say discrete time signal processing. Right. And, um, and this is your clock generator? Here? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's a phase lock loop. It's going through a series of buffers, and it's coming out of here. And by us um, feeding a... Uh, I just changed the tone because oh, okay. I felt like it. <laughs> I've been hearing 220 hertz all week. Yeah, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. So by us changing the tone... Um, mm -hmm. Of the, of the LFO, the frequency, okay. which is modulated. Well, people, people want to hear it make noise. So um, twist, the, twist the various knobs and show us what they do. Oh, sure. All right, well, this is the rate um, knob. So it'll allow us to go through to a lower frequency. That's, that's higher. High. That's actually a higher frequency. So down to a very low, a lower. Um, okay, that's like more of a typical, yeah, and typical the, flangey sound. Right. Okay, let's see. Like yeah, do a little. Okay, now twist these other knobs over here and sure. have them do stuff. All right, and this is the sweep, so it just controls the amplitude of the triangle wave that's coming out of the LFO. Okay, max it out. That should that should have been maxed out right Yeah, here. okay. And this is like pretty minimal. Much, it's like almost like a straight line. Okay, max it out again. And that's maxed out. Okay. Now we have another knob. It's a manual knob, and this can further amplify that triangle wave. Okay. So that it goes into the clock input. And that should be at its lowest position. And that's at its highest. Okay. And now what about this weird regen stuff up here? We've had to play with that a lot. Right. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So what's happening uh, here with the regen is we're getting the copy of the delayed signal. Uh-huh. And feeding that back. And we're feeding it back into our input. Either with positive or negative feedback. Exactly. Okay. And right now, I think we have the positive feedback on. Okay. So Total, uh, total nominal. Let's see if we can hear it. And this should be with regen all the way up, and we're going to... No regen. Okay, it's a very subtle effect there. Crank that regen back in. No regen. Okay. More regen. Yeah, regen. I, hear, I hear that. Max. Okay. And then we have a few other trimmers on there. Yeah, this uh, one's just to control the voltage to make sure we don't have any clipping, and yeah. this is something that... Um, we as designers would just turn to see if we can get a really nice yeah, sound. Yeah, like it. sounds pretty nice. Yeah, and I should mention, um, I think I uh, took you on a wild goose chase. Oh, yeah. I originally wanted this to be for a synth, like a voltage control, external voltage controllable instead of uh, from the signal from this LFO. Um, but it turns out that um, it's, it's fairly sensitive of what useful voltages into this clock right. rate input are. And the, the various things I sketched out sort of exceeded those tolerances. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, so we started to, you know, make some typical mix in external control CV with some sort of internal offset and flip that, flip that around, you know, this inverted and flip that around. But it turns out um, we would need to put in some careful clamping circuitry right. to keep this within a control range. And I've decided that we've sort of had it enough. So right. we'll go ahead and build it with this and LFO. Not, and the LFO that we had had some of those yeah. clamping diodes. Yeah. So. So, so we'll we'll go with that. The other thing is there's also a TL431 making a 9-volt supply from because, a plus 15. Right, because this was originally original a stomp pedal. Yeah. But we needed a plus 15 and a minus 15 because it turned out that our input signal needed to be in the millivolt range. 
So, and we were requiring that a 10 volt input be our um, design criteria. Right. Oh, so you do have you yeah, do have so some other using, circuitry. So we're so. still using these op amps for the plus right. So there's um, so originally small signals go in. So we have you have some plus minus 15 op amp circuitry at the beginning right. to attenuate before that input and out and after the output. Yep. Um, it back DC up. blocking cap to yep. drop it down and back up. So yep. you do we're using plus or minus 15 here. They're getting 9 volt from the TL431. Yep. I figured that would be easier to get to the original stomp pedal design to work than try to switch the whole thing to work off right. of this one. Yes. Okay. This is very, very fun. Uh, anything okay. else you want to say about your circuit? I don't know. I hope to build more in the future and learn more about flangers. You actually, cool. you've got, what is your BBD chip? Uh, it is the MN3007. It's actually out of production, but okay, somehow you got it still have... Okay, you got off eBay, I think. Right, right, and I actually ordered some more because those were coming from China, but I ordered, like, some from a store from North Carolina. Oh, yeah. more expensive, but... Yeah, the ones from China, place. yeah, it's, um... I, I've ordered stuff from China before, and you get what you get. Sometimes you can get right. some good deals. Sometimes it doesn't quite it's work. It's definitely a good deal. <laughs> okay. Um, but you, you've got like nine more of these chips, right? Absolutely. So you're planning to experiment, maybe mm-hmm. build serum pedals or something yep. over the summer. Uh, remind me, I should send you Jürgen Heibels. Uh, I'll apologize to Jürgen if I'm mispronouncing the name. Uh, has done a lot of work with these BBDs. And, and uh, in honor of, of Harry Bissell, who is on the synth DIY list, who you don't know, uh, we should say that BB, he always says BBDs suck. Um, but we're having some fun time. One thing I'll say, they are awfully noisy. We don't have it, but if you look at the scope, they're, the scope traces are just oh, they're very fuzzy. I think we can grab one really fast. Yeah, show, yeah, show us the output on the scope. Yeah, so. yeah go, let's go ahead and play that. Just to, to, to get a sense of how much yeah. stuff there is. And uh, the scope is good for debugging because we could actually look at the input one. and output and see it. Let's take channel 2 off and let's off. Phase shifted. Let's see what's going on here. I think I want to... Oh, what are we looking at now? Are we looking at the output? output? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty... It's kind of noisy. I'm just playing around here. That's kind of fuzzy there. Actually, turn off your sweep real quick. Sure. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. Leave that there. So there's a square wave going. Oh, I think we're looking at the clock, actually. You may be right. Are we looking at the clock? No. Are we looking at the final audio output? It should be the output. I can probe a little bit. No, no. Uh, go, ahead, no go ahead and leave that there, okay? Yeah, is that the output? That was, this was the input. Oh, there we go. This is the input right here. Okay, okay, probe the output. And then the output should be this right here. Yeah. So it's a funky looking output. Yeah, let's auto set that. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. It's 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 having because it's moving around, it's having trouble triggering. Actually, you know what? For expensive scopes, these don't trigger well. There we go. Yeah. It, it should probably lose. Or is, is it going to keep the trigger? Okay, there we go. Now you'll see there's there's some little fuzz. See all that fuzz on the output? Let's see if I can blow up the scale and see that. Not really without screwing up the trigger. Okay, but there we go. Okay, see y'all later. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.